Hi, Aaron. friends. Julia here, recording this, August 27th, 2022. And I'm going to talk about outer space and ETs and other entities and the simulacrum or simulacrum or simulacrum, however you prefer to say and hear that. When you look up at the starry night sky, you're witnessing a holographic projection. When phenomena and objects are suspected as existing, then they are eventually rendered and re-rendered each time they're observed by anyone in the collective. That's how this simulation works. Simulation wants us to think we're on a globe moving through space. Why is this? Perhaps because the real Earth slash universe is actually that way. Why else would the simulation present that model? Jason says that this is a survival simulation created in order to work out how to best survive the nemesis event, which occurs every 972 years. And as most of the people know, listening to this, the next nemesis event is due in the year 2046. Yellow Rose for Texas, YouTube channel says we're in this contained biosphere to protect us from an ongoing war, among other things. And this ongoing war is happening in the real universe and we're contained away from it. Jason says also that there is a war going on outside the simulation. He says it in his um, Demons video, origin of demons video. My question is, if this projected universe is rendered based on beliefs and the consensus of the collective, then how can it model the real universe? If we're just creating what we see by thinking it's gonna be there, then how is that gonna be what the real universe looks like if we're rendering it here? So maybe it's a little bit different, or perhaps the real universe themes are somehow placed into the human collective via downloads from the Akashic Records and then rendered here. I don't know. All that being said, the parts of the universe that we look up and observe is a projection. We currently can't physically voyage into outer space, not even to the moon. It's been suggested that astronauts and others in the space program were MK Ultra mind control to make them believe that they had particular experiences. If you honestly look into the moon landings narrative, then the notion is quite comical, as I'm sure most of you know. There's also the, uh, the possibility of uh, the traveling being done in the astral. Perhaps what super soldiers and others remember that happened to them happened interdimensionally, but not physically. And again, MK Ultra mind control was most likely involved. There's also the potential for portals allowing beings to travel in and out of this contained biosphere at certain times in certain locations, or perhaps there are activations of some sort in order to open the portals. So if space is fake, then where do ETs come from? Perhaps the original Anuna were from Nibiru or Nemesis X, but any beings that we've witnessed since this simulation started are all from within this contained simulation and not from outer space in spaceships. Keep in mind that according to Jason, the main goal of this sim is to perform DNA experiments and that there are many underground civilizations. As an errant, you can imagine how varied and interesting the many humanoid and other forms of life might be. The grays seem like they're clearly from underground and that's why they lack pigment. 
And perhaps a lot of these people, these beings that come from underground are humans that have been abducted and kept down there and they've mutated. Then there are all the interdimensional beings that we don't see. And some of them can sometimes manifest a form or take over other forms and present themselves to us. Poltergeist and the like are immortal personalities trapped here without the luxury of having avatars for each incarnation. Jason in his video, The Origin of Demons, and I'll link his video and also Yellow Rose of Texas, Yellow Rose for Texas, if anybody wants to look into her stuff in the comments. But um, let's see, he gave a couple of scenarios as to why these poltergeist beings lost their privileges of having an avatar upon each incarnation here. One was because they went against the protocol outlined to them that was outlined to them before they entered the sim. They didn't follow their orders, so they were unplugged. But their bodies are still being kept alive. And then the other scenario is that um, that the the real avatars of these poltergeists were attacked and murdered due to a war going on outside the simulation. So for those immortal personalities, not only do they not receive avatars here, they also have no avatar to return to when the sim ends and they're not happy at all. And so all their anger made them uh, capable of creating informed fields that live up to the fear mongering that was laid out by the Catholic Church about demons, etc. The church conjured up an image, put it into the collective mindset, and it was manifested by these trapped immortal beings ready to take on their role. So the energy was put there for them to occupy, and they occupied it. So really interesting how the Catholic Church helped create demons. So yeah, and again, that's from Jason's um, video, The Origin of Demons. And if I'm not correct about what he's saying in there, please let me know, because that's a really complicated video to get to grasp than what it was for me. All right, so the actual spacecraft witness are a combination of psyops and collective manifestations of data streams, as in the work of Stephen Greer and others. Those like Stephen and his followers are well adept at manifesting. And since that's a nice distraction to keep them from figuring out what's really going on, AIX and the simulacrum oblige and make sure they contact these beings. And also, again, these beings could be interdimensional and even from here, and they just resonate at a frequency to attract them. And it seems like he's mostly come across benevolent ones, and that's probably because they're vibrating at benevolent frequencies and not fear frequencies. If you vibrate at a fear frequency, then you're likely to encounter entities if you're trying to, if you have that intention to encounter other entities of the negative sort. So it depends on your resonance, whether they can uh, communicate with you. That's my opinion anyway, or, and my experience. All right, actual craft from outer space cannot enter this contained biosphere, but there can be a projection of a scenario where that happens. And then there's those here who know that we're in a STEM and contribute and making it appear there are UFOs from outer space about. There are technologies in existence that we aren't privy to and which are probably beyond most of our imagination. Some of these technologies prompt people to think that they've seen scrap craft from outer space. So yeah, we're on a stationary flat plane, but it's not a disk floating in space somehow. As part of this biosentient hologram, it's a plane of inertia in a torus field. 
when it comes to the real universe out there, there are most likely interactions with other beings. We probably do have beings coming in from outer space, I would assume. It could be possible that the humanoid form is prevalent, or maybe it's not. We can only speculate as to what it's like outside the sim. What seems sure is that whatever this realm is, things are winding down. So much has been revealed and there's so much more to uncover. And it's so awesome that we have the use of the internet to share and explore new ideas and discovery and just communicate with each other. So cool. Definitely a great awakening if, you, if you're not um, under anesthesia or something. I don't know why some people aren't waking up. I guess it's the whole NPC thing. But the main thing to keep in mind always is that there is nothing to fear, nothing at all to fear. You just need to enjoy the game, stay focused on how you want things to be, and always help others if you can. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are when you hear this. And I'll talk to you next time. Ciao, ciao.